Thanks for tuning in to Kentucky Running, brought to you by John's Run Walk Shop in Lexington. I'm your host, Matt Reno. At the time of this episode's release, it's just about Iron Horse Eve. If you're running the Iron Horse Half Marathon or 12K, I'll see you in Midway. It's a really fun race. I can't wait to run it. Just showcases how beautiful Central Kentucky is. And as we've talked about before, one of our core values at John's is keeping Kentucky beautiful. As fellow runners, of course, we want to take care of the air we breathe and the ground we run on, and we're always looking for ways to do that better. That's why we participate in Lexington's Green Check program. It's a great way for local businesses to work toward more environmentally friendly practices. And we're very excited to have recently been recertified by Green Check at the silver level. Now, building greener practices into your business is not always easy. Of course, there's the obvious things we can do like recycling, but there's a ton of not so obvious things that do add up to make a big impact. And that's why Green Check is such a fantastic program. It's like having a sustainability Sherpa guiding you through all the measures your business could take that you might have otherwise missed. I highly recommend other Lexington businesses looking into Green Check. And we're going to learn more about that program on the show today. We're talking with Chrissy Balding. She's the Environmental Initiative Specialist for the City of Lexington Division of Environmental Services Sustainability Section. She'll tell us about Green Check, Reforest the Bluegrass, and what individuals can do to make sure Central Kentucky stays healthy and beautiful for generations to come. Before we get to that, let's hear from our Brooks guru, Connor, about a shoe that's been getting a ton of buzz since it launched very recently. So on October 5th, we had a Brooks demo run, which we build as a secret shoe launch. Well, the secret is out. The launch was the Brooks Glycerin Max. It is amazing shoe. I love running in it. And right now we're going to talk with our Brooks guru, Connor Naughton. Connor, welcome to Kentucky Running. Hey, Matt. Thanks for having me. I, I love talking Glycerin Max, so I can give us a whole little breakdown on this this fun new shoe from Brooks. All right. Well, yeah, let's let's go over the basics of it. Like yeah. how How does this compare to things like the Glycerin or the Ghost Max? Yeah, so... This is the biggest stack height shoe we've ever had at Brooks, which is exciting, but we're doing it with a purpose. So it's this brand new foam for us. It's called DNA Tuned. It has these two separate cell sizes. So it's a, I mean, I know you were on the run with it, so you probably yep. get it, but it has this really cool new experience. You have this really soft, plush feel on the heel with these large cells and then a really springy toe off. It's, it's a different experience once you get it on your foot. Yeah, I really enjoyed the run and the responsiveness of it. It didn't feel like I was sinking into it so much. It felt firm enough, but still bouncy enough to propel me throughout the run. So what is the stack height on this? So it is 35, 29, so six drop, but yeah, it's mm-hmm. still under 40, but yeah. we never add that stack height just to add stack height. I mean, it's a very purposeful thing. We did it for this different experience and to really highlight this new foam for us with DNA Tuned. So it's okay. it's not just a big old high shoe for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good, good. Who would this be for? Yeah, that's a really good question. It's one I've been getting a lot with this new shoe. And I mean, the, the broad answer is I feel like it, it's a shoe for everybody. But if you want to look at a few different groups uh, with it being this really like big plush protective shoe and still having the this springy toe off, I think it's perfect for anyone marathon training or training for a race it's a it's a one shoe that can do everything for you so if you're going out for that easy slow run it's going to be really cushioned and save those legs but if you want to have some quick turnover and do something fast it it has that ability too so definitely that group of like the big kind of training trying to to get the most out of your shoe and then it is that big like wide base like that ghost max super protective shoe so people on their feet all day i know i've basically just been wearing it non-stop for the last month basically and it uh it is great when you're on your feet i mean if you're a, a nurse or a retail worker a line worker it's going to mm-hmm. be an awesome shoe that's going to cushion and protect you great how about durability how long would you expect it to last it li- i mean it lasts it's still that like 300 to 500 like we see mm-hmm. with all brooks shoes i mean even though it's new foam for us it's still super critical foam it's nitrogen injected it, has some of those same Brooks guts. So even though it's a new foam, I don't think anyone needs to be scared that you're going to drop some coin and then get out on a a few runs and it'll fall apart. We really think about what we do. It's a really solid and and well-made shoe. 
Let's get back into the DNA tune foam. Can you yeah. give us some details about that? Yeah, yeah. It's kind of a new foam we're, we're looking at at Brooks. Like I said, it's those two different cell sizes. It's also uh, a really cool design piece. With those smaller cells, you get this really cool color uh, in the smaller cells and it's kind of look like a translucent midsole. Mm -hmm. And then that white, that translucent piece is those, those bigger cells. So yeah. You know, Brooks, a big focus for us is having cushion and support that adapt to different people and support you and cushion you when you need it. And I mean, DNA Tuned really fits that bill. It's giving you like that support, that cushion where you need it, where a lot of people are asking for it, but then it's still this responsive feel. So, you know, mm -hmm. Brooks, we're always have this open communication between a run signature lab, people developed in the shoes and the runner, and we take that feedback and that's kind of how we ended up with DNA Tuned. A lot of your recent products have been working toward that carbon neutral status. So where does this one fit in? So yeah, we sustainability is a, is a big piece for us at Brooks. We're always trying to move toward like a more green path. That's one of our big initiatives. And this is still, we're using recycled plastic in the shoe. Biopolymers, we're not perfect by any means, but it's something every time that at Brooks that we're developing something new, whether it's a shoe or a foam, we're always trying to stay on that green path. Glycerin Max, available now at John's Run Walk Shop. So come in and check it out. Connor, thank you for being on the show. Thank you so much, Matt. And yeah, go try the Glycerin Max. I want to take a quick break to tell you about our sponsor, Curex Insoles. If you're a runner or other kind of athlete, of course you want to do what you can to prevent injuries. An easy way to do this is with a pair of insoles. When you run, you're exerting up to three times your body weight on your feet and joints. Curex insoles reduce that stress on your joints. Less pressure on your body means decreased pain and increased performance. Curex Run Pro insoles are supportive, but also soft and flexible. They come in three profiles, high, medium, and low to fit your arch type. So next time you're in John's Run Walk Shop, ask us to check out your arches and knee alignment so we can help find the right pair of Curex Run Pro insoles for you. Learn more at johnsrunwalkshop.com slash insoles. Today we're talking to Chrissy Balding, Environmental Initiative Specialist at the Division of Environmental Services, Sustainability Section for the City of Lexington. Chrissy, thanks for being on the show today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Let's start by talking about your role as Environmental Initiative Specialist. What made you want to get involved in this area of local government? It's something that I've always been interested in, even as far back in sixth grade. My friend and I made a version of Monopoly that was Recycleopoly. Nice. And so I've always found ways in different jobs that I've had to try to work sustainability and environmentalism in. And I'd been in a previous role in the city for about six years, and then this opened up. And I thought, this is exactly what I've been looking for. Recycleopoly. Does it finish much quicker than regular Monopoly? Oh, no. Okay. Yeah, because I know I've never finished a game of Monopoly. I always give up. Yes, it's definitely a marathon, not a sprint. Okay. All right. So let's talk about the Green Check program. John's Run Workshop was just recertified, this time at the silver level. And certainly we want to make our business as sustainable as possible, but... We're not necessarily experts in that regard, so we definitely appreciate having people from the city guiding us and showing us things we might otherwise miss on our own. Can you talk about the main purpose of Green Check? Yeah, so just to give you a little history on it, Green Check has been around since 2016. It's completely free. It's a sustainability certification program, and it's open to businesses, nonprofits, and places of worship. 2016 was our pilot class, so it was a little small. Mm -hmm. But since that time, we've had more than 70 businesses participate. That's awesome. What exactly does the program do for those businesses? The businesses apply through us, and applications are currently open until January 15th, 2025. Okay. All right. And as you know, because we met about this, there is a scorecard that's pretty much laid out like a report card. Mm -hmm. There's nine different categories where you can get points for sustainable things that you're doing. Everything from awareness and education to the landscaping around your business to transportation efficiency and innovation, which is like anything that doesn't fit into the other categories. A city staff person, which is usually me, meets with you and kind of goes over that and then makes suggestion on easy changes that you could make to be a little bit greener. And then you have until the summer to make those changes and kind of show what you've implemented. And that's when you get your final grade. There's a lot of checks on that checklist, but right. it, it may seem daunting at first, but it really is a lot of small actions that 
can make a big difference. So it's not as scary as it seems when you see all the things that you could be doing. Right. And some of the things are things that might already be in place, but just not formalized. Mm -hmm. So like having a power down checklist, most people I think do tend to turn off the lights when they leave a room. But just putting that in place that you do that at the end of the day. Right. I remember when we were going through it at John's, there were things that we were already doing and we just hadn't written down. It was just part of our regular processes. But yeah, like you said, it needs to be formalized. So that's just one easy thing to do to ensure that continuity of your sustainability processes. Right. And of course, it's the right thing to do, but it's also, it makes good business sense. How does Green Check benefit local businesses as well as the environment? We offer networking events um, about six times a year including behind the scenes tours. We just recently did a tour of the Recycle Center that was only open to green check businesses. Mm -hmm. You could see where everything ends up. You also provide stickers and other materials that businesses can display in their stores. Absolutely. And, we yeah. give you all you know, the marketing materials mm -hmm. and, and swag to show off the hard work that you've put in. Mm -hmm. And we also like to take opportunities to talk about the great things that our green check businesses are doing. Yeah, we really appreciate that. And so you know, for any business that's kind of on the fence, it's not just the right thing to do. It makes sense from a business yeah. perspective. And when we have those tours and things, it's really an opportunity to talk to other green check businesses about what they're doing, you know, maybe what worked for them, what didn't, different things they've tried. And you said applications are open. Where do people go to get started? The, the process? website is lexingtonky.gov slash green check. Can you share some of the key environmental initiatives your department is currently working on? Yeah, um, we have a pickleball recycling program. Right now it's in its pilot stage. Mm -hmm. So you can find bins for your broken or cracked pickleballs at Kirk Levington Park. And that is a partnership with Parks and Recreation and the Kentucky Pickleball Association. But so far we have recycled more than 800 balls. Okay. Yeah, there's That's well, if you ever play like at Crook Levington, there's always a line to get a court. Yeah, it's amazing how that sport has taken off so much. In fact, it, we've started selling court shoes because of pickleball and because we were learning that as the sport was increasing popularity, so were ankle injuries. I have not tried yet, but someone told me last week it was for people who are not very coordinated, so that's right up my alley. <laughs> <laughs> Another event that we work with you on is the Reforest 5K. It happens every March at Heisel Farm Park. Beautiful course and very unique race swag in addition to T-shirt and things like that. You also get a tree that you can take home and plant. Any idea how many trees have been planted by the Reforest 5K alone? Um, I think this will be the fifth year of the yep. Reforest 5K. Yeah. We had to do a couple that were virtual, but people yep. were still able to pick up their trees. Mm -hmm. So I would say approximately a thousand. All right, that's awesome, and that's just a portion of the trees that are planted in the spring because Reforest 5K is supporting Reforest the bluegrass, which yes. is that's a phenomenal event. It's been going on for many years. Can you tell us about the history of Reforest the bluegrass? Yeah, this will be, I believe, the 26th year for Reforest the bluegrass. The location rotates every year. It's in mid-April on a Saturday, and it, if you haven't come, it's a really fun event. It usually goes from about 9 to 1. There are thousands of trees planted. There's free food, live music. There's all kinds of educational and kids' activities, like making your own bird feeder. And when we say planting trees, these are little seedlings. You don't have to worry about having too much muscle. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> How many trees do you think have been planted over the years? Do you have stats on that? So if you go to... LexingtonKY.gov slash reforest, you can actually see a cool interactive map mm -hmm. of all the locations um, where we've planted. Because there are only so many parks in Lexington, there are some that have had multiple reforest plantings. But to answer your question, we've had more than 18,000 volunteers planted more than 215,000 seedlings and more than 200 acres of floodplains have been restored. So it's wow. such a great thing to be involved with. Yeah, that has made such a huge difference over the past quarter century. That's amazing. Yeah, absolutely. So backing up for a bit, can you tell us a little bit more about what it means to work for the city's sustainability section? Sure. Well, we are a small but mighty section. Mm -hmm. My boss was hired in February 2022, and then I came on board last December. So when we talk about sustainability, I know a lot of people immediately go to the environment and they think about like, give a hoot, don't pollute. <laughs> yep. And that's definitely part of it. 
But our broader way that we look at it is making sure we're using our resources today in a way that does not harm the ability of our future generations to have resources that they need. So there are really three different parts that we look at, which is in the environment, of course, you know, protecting our natural resources. For people, making sure that there is fair and equitable treatment and also ensuring quality of life and improving quality of life. And then economy, making sure that we can support ongoing growth without depleting our resources. It's a little broader than just picking up litter. Okay. (laughs) Awesome. Well, no, thanks for clarifying that. So what are some of the biggest challenges in terms of sustainability that Lexington is facing and what's the city doing to address them? Well, I think that we are really making changes in both small and big ways. Like we talked about the pickleball recycling and that's limited to whatever percentage of Lexingtonians play pickleball, which it it does seem like a lot from people I talk to. Yeah. (laughs) It seems like half of my social media feed is very excited about pickleball. But we also look at it a little bit more big picture. So we just released our updated Empower Lexington plan, which Mm -hmm. is the plan for a resilient community. The previous plan was from 2012, so it was definitely a need of update. But this is something that we developed with input from a lot of stakeholders and residents and just really community members. The different sections are natural systems and ecology, transportation and land use, so like alternative transportation, historic preservation, things like that, water efficiency, energy, and greenhouse gas emissions. Um, We just released the results of our greenhouse gas emissions inventory. Materials and resources, so like what happens to all these different things? You know, are they landfilled? Are they recycled? Are there special waste streams? And then quality of life, and that includes everything to like graduation rates, to affordable housing. So it's very broad. That's a lot. I like to talk about us like we're kind of the connective tissue. Mm -hmm. So the pickleball thing is a good example. My boss heard about the idea about another community doing something similar. And I reached out to the nonprofit that does it. And then we talked to Parks and Parks said, hey, Kentucky Pickleball Association should definitely be a part of this conversation because they're super active and they're enthusiastic about making sure that their sport is sustainable. So it's really just kind of starting the conversation and bringing everyone together. It's not totally on two people's shoulders to solve no, all these issues. absolutely not. No, it's just building relationships throughout the city. And what can listeners do to get involved in some of these local efforts? On social, you can follow Live Green Lex on Facebook and Instagram. You can visit lexingtonky.gov slash sustainability to sign up for our monthly newsletter about upcoming events and volunteer opportunities. And we offer a tip of the month. And then I would encourage you just to get involved and, you know, start paying attention to council meetings and things that your neighborhood is doing, little ways that you can make an impact. Can you give us one little tip that people can take away? Well, I know a lot of times it can be intimidating for people to think about having a sustainable lifestyle and like, oh man, I've got to change everything. And there is actually a Tanzanian proverb that I really like. I quote it all the time. It says, little by little, a little becomes a lot. Nice. Along those lines, no one is asking you to be a perfect environmentalist. Just try and just keep trying. Like, I'm not perfect. I, you know, I painted my nails recently. I drove my car to work. But... If you just keep looking for ways to make changes, then that really does make a difference. One thing that I, a question that I like to ask both, you know, at work and in my personal life is how can we do this differently? You know, a lot of times folks will run up against the the comment of, well, it's always been done this way. Approaching things like, well, do we have to have, you know, plastic bottles of water or can we ask people to bring their own bottle with them? I know... Probably a lot of people listening have, like, old, nasty running shoes that aren't even good enough to donate for reuse. But I know at John's, you all have that box. Mm -hmm. Is it with Sneaker Impact? Sneaker Impact. Okay, great. Yeah. I have a pair of shoes. I did a mud run. They're pretty gross. So I will wash them before I bring them in. And that way I know that they're being recycled. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, A lot of people just aren't aware that there is another option than throwing your old shoes in the trash when you're done with them. If you take them to John's, we send them to Sneaker Impact. We did a whole episode about 
Sneaker Impact too. So if you go back through our archives, you can listen to that and learn about the organization. But what they do is take shoes in any condition, as long as they're dry, you can't bring wet shoes. But other than that, they'll take anything, either refurbish it where it can be sent to developing nations to be resold, help people create businesses. And if it's too worn out for that, they break it down and recycle it into new items. That's great. Mm -hmm. And I think people just kind of paying attention and being thoughtful about what the end life of their things are. Like there's no way. You can't just throw it away. Right. Exactly. It does go somewhere. So, yeah, think about that a little bit more. And that's, again, that's why we appreciate programs like Green Check, where someone can come in with this big list of things and we can check out, yes, we're doing this, we're doing this. Oh, we didn't even think of that. It's really helpful because everybody just kind of goes about their business and it can be really difficult to just stop and think about how to do things better. So having someone to guide us who's already thought through that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why I, I highly recommend other businesses uh, checking out Green Check and applying for Green Check certification. And I'll say one last little tip is like if you're feeling intimidated, like if you want to start being more environmental, but you don't really know how, just pick one or two things to focus on at first. Mm -hmm. So like always having a reusable bag in your car for when you go grocery shopping or, you know, if you make a stop at John's on your way home or I love getting coffee in various places. So I usually have a reusable coffee cup. So I'm not getting the paper cup every time. Mm -hmm. All right, Chrissy, thank you very much for coming on the show and talking to us about sustainability. Thank you so much. Big thanks to Chrissy for talking to us about all the good things happening in Lexington when it comes to sustainability. I know protecting the environment seems daunting when you watch the news and you see major catastrophes happening. You think, what can I do? Well, I really believe the answer is more than you think. You just have to start. It's good to know there are people like Chrissy and our local government providing resources to help us get started. Check the links in the show notes for more. And on our next episode, we're going to learn about another way you can get involved in the well-being of our community. We're talking to Griffin Van Meter from Yes for Parks Lexington about an important ballot initiative coming up this election day. It's going to be a special episode. We're going to release it early, so be on the lookout for that. I'm Matt Reno. Thank you for listening. Please like, subscribe, and share so more people can find this podcast and learn about great local programs like Green Check. Keep moving, and we'll talk again soon on Kentucky Running.